Welcome back to the Monster Hunter World board game series of videos. In this video, we will go through the Wild Spire Waste core set, going through the gameplay overview, our thoughts about the game, what makes it different from the Ancient Forest set, and the three things we liked and disliked about it. This is going to be one of the many videos as we go through all the sets and expansions that add iconic monsters from the video game. Hi, my name is Nick and we are Tabletop Duo, so grab your favorite drink and let's start with the overview. The Monster Hunter World board game is a tabletop adaptation of the popular video game franchise by Capcom. Designed for 1-4 to four players, it challenges players to take on the roles of skilled hunters who must track down and defeat ferocious monsters while collecting precious resources along the way in a campaign that ends once the hunters defeat a 4-star monster, which are the ultimate hunts in the board game. When you start the game, you pick up a quest to face a monster. The first time you face a new monster type, you must pick its introductory hunt quest. Quests have a time limit, which is based on the number of time cards left on the time deck, so the harder the quest, the less cards you will have on the time deck. Once you have chosen your hunt, you go to the investigation quest phase. In this phase, you read the entries of the quest book as you try to find the clues about the monster's whereabouts in the world. The system works like those adventure books that give you a couple of options and depending on the ones you choose, it may reward you with potions, crafting materials, track tokens or bring you closer to the hunt. Choosing to spend time gathering resources and other materials decreases your hunt time, so you have to balance how much time you want to spend on the investigation phase. Most of the choices are simple and you know if one will lead you to the monster or to more resources. Once you find the monster, the hunting phase starts and that's the main deal of the board game. The Wild Spire Waste features a large double-sided game board that represents this area in the video game and you choose which side you want to play. The game features a deep and immersive combat system where players must use their characters' abilities, equipment and teamwork to take down powerful monsters that they encounter. The monsters have huge miniatures and the combat works in a similar way to boss fights in Dark Souls the board game. This core set comes with the Baroth, Puke Puke, Juratodus, Diablos and Black Diablos. The monster's miniature base has four arcs, which indicate the front, right, left and back side of the monster. When the monster attacks, you flip one of the monster behavior cards and you perform the behavior. Monsters target the closest or the furthest character and you can see who it will target next in the back of the cards, which is pretty cool. Monsters can attack or move, or move and attack, following the order displayed from left to right on the behavior card. They may attack a specific node on the board, or a series of nodes if the attack aims at one or more of the monster's arcs. And each attack is related to a certain part of the monster, like the head, tail or body. This is important because, like in the game, hunters can break monster parts, and when some are broken, they will give negative status to the monster attacks. The behavior also determines how many turns hunters will have to attack before the monster attacks again, and the maximum number of cards hunters can use to attack the monster. Each player has a unique character with its own equipment, which can be upgraded and customized over time. The Wild Spire Waste comes with the Charge Blade, the Switch Axe, the Insect Glaive, and the Heavy Bowgun. Each of these weapon types have their own exotic gameplay, and they come with their own unique mechanics deck. On your turn, you select the cards you want to use to create your attack combo. Then each attack card shows you how many damage cards you have to draw to damage the monster, if it has the break ability to break a monster's part or other class-specific mechanics. Once you build the attack combo, you're going to be drawing the corresponding number of damage cards and you apply the damage to the monster, subtracting its defense value depending on the part that you hit. Some monster parts have lower defense value, so positioning is really important in the game. If you do damage and the attack had the break ability, you add the break tokens to the monster's part that you attacked. If you manage to add as many break tokens as listed on the part, the part will break and the monster usually gets a debuff or lose even more health. At the end of a hunter's turn, they flip a time card and pass to the next player. Players must defeat the monsters before the time deck ends. And if a character is defeated during the combat, they will faint. Players can faint up to two times per combat, and if you faint for a third time, you lose and you must restart the hunt. When the monster is defeated, each broken part gives guaranteed loot, which is displayed on the back of the monster sheet. Then players roll three dice and get the loot according to the monster table, writing it down on their character sheets. After defeating the monster, players go to the HQ, where they can upgrade their weapons and armor via the forge board, visit the Meowskular Chef for buffs, scout for more basic materials and more. Then the players can decide to fight a new monster or fight a higher difficulty version of the same monster to grind for loot. Once you gather enough power to defeat a 4-star monster and you defeat it, you win the campaign. And that's it for our overview. 
As I mentioned on our Ancient Forest review, I hope I was able to translate the excitement of the hunt and the combat in this game. Now for the review, I will go into more details about what makes this game tick and the differences between Ancient Forest and the Wild Spire Waste sets. And again, I can't restate how fun the hunting phase is in the game. Like, when you're fighting the monsters, it's really exciting, and even replaying hunts is fun because the fights will play differently every time. This is achieved by the Dark Souls board game inspired boss combat mechanics and the monsters behavior deck. They took their strengths and improved on their weaknesses. On top of that, if you're looking for a harder starter set, the Wild Spire Waste is your choice to go. Compared to the Ancient Forest, I feel the enemies on this set they are more aggressive and they, they do more damage and they also tank a little bit more than the, the enemies in the Ancient Forest, for example. Looting is another highlight of the game, as I mentioned on the Ancient Forest review, because they give you lots of ways to obtain crafting materials you need to forge weapons and armor, by giving you specific loot per monster part that the players break, and by allowing you to choose the loot by summing up the loot dice results or by leaving them separate. On top of that, you can visit the resource center to get the, some uh, other core materials, further giving you ways to get the loot you want. But you must watch out during the investigation phase since some of the resources are very hard to find and if you don't choose the right path, like, it's gonna be really tough. And I'm talking specifically about you, the elusive fertile mud. It's really hard to, to get you. The new weapons and gear that you can craft or upgrade make a real difference and allow players to create specific builds tailored toward difficult hunts. The crafted weapons and armor are themed after each monster, so for example you have a Pookie Pookie set and weapon, and not every hunter will have a weapon to craft for each monster, but any hunter can craft any monster armor. Sets will give you immunity against certain elemental attacks, following the monster's elemental specialty li just like in the game. There is a clear sense of progression as you upgrade, and the better weapons and gear really feel more powerful when you equip them. The four weapon types in the Wild Spire Waste are fun to play, but each one of them has a unique mechanic represented by these cards and a unique deck required to trigger its gameplay. For example, with the Heavy Bowgun, you cannot target a specific part of the monster, so every time you attack, you flip cards from the unique deck, which determines which part you're going to be actually attacking, which is kind of like what you see in the game if you play with this weapon. The Hunter weapons on the Ancient Forest set, they are simpler to play, but um, if you, if you want to have weapons that are more special, that have like this uh, unique mechanics, then this, the Wild Spire Waste, would be the right set to buy. Now let's talk about progression. Even though you have five enemies in the core set, they have different quest versions that range from one to three stars. The only monster that goes beyond that is the Black Diablos, with quest versions that range from two to four stars. Each difficulty level has their own spin on their special ability, and breaking the monster parts have their unique consequences. The map receives some slight updates for each monster encounter as well, with the addition of rocks, lakes and bushes to make each encounter still fun and unique to play every time. Also, if you have the Ancient Forest set, you can combine its monsters with the ones on the Wild Spire Waste, further increasing the number of monsters you can fight and giving more options of weapons and gears to craft. Like in the Ancient Forest, the Wild Spire Waste comes with the gear and weapon cards required to do that. In terms of card sleeves, you can use size 63.5 by 88 for the standard cards, and if you want to know which brand we use, we use the Mayday Games Premium Sleeves. The sad part though is that the inserts were not made to fit cards with sleeves, so if you use them, it's gonna be hard to fit everything in it. You're gonna have to figure it out how to put everything there. Now let's go through the three things we liked and disliked about the game. And the first thing we liked is the combat. Instead of using random dice mechanic, they created a deterministic way for players to engage in combat. Combining the cards to create combos and damage the monsters is really fun and makes you feel in control of the combat and the pacing. The Wild Spire Waste weapon types have their own unique mechanics, which play very differently from each other, and they are all really fun. There is not a single one that feels clunky and not interesting. This is a big difference from the Ancient Forest set, where they are more streamlined and have no unique mechanics tied to them. The second thing we liked is the loot system. Again, the key here is that the players have a good level of agency over which loot to get by breaking parts, exploring for materials during the investigation, or by gathering core materials on side activities. Obtaining loot is fun, and getting the right materials to craft what you want is really exciting. And the third thing that we liked is going to be the replayability aspect of each monster hunt. 
The enemy behavior deck paired with the time deck, the quest difficulty, the unique abilities for each weapon type, and the random draw of combat cards and damage makes each playthrough a unique experience even if we're fighting the same monster. Now for the things that we didn't like, the first one is the investigation phase. Each monster has a unique number of entries in the book, and once you go through all of them a few times, it becomes very repetitive. One player reads and the others just listen, so it's hard to keep people paying attention to it. And I wish there was an audiobook version to help people staying hooked to the narrative. The second thing we didn't like is the player's dashboard. It's made of a thin cardboard and every time you play, the board moves, making your cards move everywhere, so you have to keep rearranging your things. Like I mentioned on the Ancient Forest review, for me this could be a minor thing, but it's really noticeable when you play. And the third one is the fact that the inserts don't support sleeved cards. Because of the frequency of how damage, attack, behavior and time cards are played, picked and reshuffled, they could wear out fast and if you want to sleeve them, they won't fit in the box. That's it for today's video, so stay tuned for the next unboxing and review videos on our channel. You can find the other Monster Hunter core set and expansions review and unboxing videos right here as soon as we release them. Thanks for watching and see you next time, Hunter. Bye!